Welcome back to Switch to Linux. And today we're going to continue talking about business and FOSS. And we're going to look at some of the server tools. So particularly I've been looking around for any possible alternatives to using cPanel, which I'm currently using with a lot of my systems. The challenge is, is that about a year ago, a big investment company bought cPanel. And like big in co investment companies tend to do, they tend to jack up prices. Now, some cases you may not actually have any real issues. Other cases uh, you may. It really depends on who your server uh, management company is and, and what you are doing. So for example, I actually have a affiliate over at A2 Hosting. So you can actually follow along my affiliate link on A2 Hosting if you're looking for business. And if you use their shared hosting plan here, you can get this with cPanel and it's not going to be changing in your prices anytime soon. And so that is so still a really good issue. Now what I do though is I have a VPS hosting and I have a VPS hosting with cPanel and that VPS hosting with cPanel which is really designed to manage a lot of websites. Well, they've moved around the pricing structure on that and the number of client websites that I currently control could start costing me an extra like 18 or so dollars a month, which I already offer pretty low rates to host a website. So that really starts to cut into my profits quite a bit. So I wanted to look around and there is a tool called ISP config, which is a open source cPanel alternative. Now, some people also said, look at Webmin. Webmin is not a competitor to cPanel. Webmin will allow you to manage a single server. It does not allow you to deploy multiple different, uh, multiple different V hosts in any logical type of system to get you anywhere near what cPanel does. And um, so I wanted to go ahead and highlight that real quick for the people that will say, check out Webmin. I've looked at it. It's not a viable solution for the types of client type stuff we're talking about doing, although it does have its uses in its places. Nevertheless, uh, what you have here with ISP config is uh, this is a tool that supports a variety of different servers, uh, anything Ubuntu, Debian, CentOS, and you can utilize this as a replacement for cPanel. I'm still learning how the system works, but what I wanna do in this video is just give you a very brief overview and talk about my experiences installing this on a local machine for small local testing. And then my next step is actually going to be to spin this up in a hosting company somewhere to give it a quick test over there, see if I can manage websites, see what types of snags I run into. So if you do come over here and use my affiliate at, um, at uh, A2 Hosting, you can actually look at um, the options that you have and you can configure one of these that's already actually set up with ISP config. So this very well might be a good place to go to get this figured out. All right, so if you head on down here, you can look at your, here's your unmanaged. Uh, and if we go ahead and drill down on these guys, you can look at the customizing options. You can customize your VPS. And then this is gonna take you to a screen that's going to give you the ability to choose anything you need. So your operating system, head on down to the bottom and you can get a Debian 9 already pre-configured with ISP config. So you really don't have to do anything more than pick this guy up. Just add the variety of things that you need and choose what you want to use. Like I said, they'll start for five bucks a month, which will be good enough to experiment with a couple of different websites. Uh, you can actually go up a little bit higher if you want to run production sites on it. But anyway, what we're going to do here is we're going to have a look at how this system works. My first, uh, first step here was to talk about the installation process. Now, if you want the whole manual, their way, now it is free, but their way of making making some money on the project in order just to keep the project going is you have to purchase the manual. But there are a lot of tips, tricks, and other information that you can find online. It's not gonna be as clear and concise. So if I end up running this, I'm probably just gonna go ahead and buy the manual anyway, if for no other reason than to support them. And I think there's 
There's two ways of buying it. I think you can buy it through SourceForge, in which case it's a static. But if you buy it directly through them, I think then you will actually get updates as updates to that manual show up. But you have over here installation tools. So this is actually the step uh, series that I went through. It actually took me quite a while to install, but a lot of that was because I was going directly onto my virtual machine and manually typing in everything. If I used my main host system here, uh, did the uh, SSH terminal into it, I could then go through and copy and paste it everything, verify what I'm doing, and probably would have had this up in probably a half an hour, maybe an hour or so. But you can see it walks through all the steps. I found that everything in their instructions, step for step, just worked beautifully. So everything actually worked out very well. Now there is actually an automated script. It says here for Debian 9, I did actually test this on Debian 10 and it does work just fine. So all you need to do is just uh, get yourself a fresh install of Debian 10 and just go ahead and run this guy here and it's going to set everything up. Now if I were doing this, uh, manually doing it, I would actually go this route because one of the challenges of the automated script is there were a few steps that you could choose or not choose a few options and it didn't really give you the choice in the automated script. Nothing too major, but for maximum customization, go through it step for step and then you'll be able to get everything figured, uh, figured out and set up. Now, what this actually gets you is you have this in simple ability just like cPanel to spin up a website. You have the ability to give clients certain accesses based on packages. There's a few things that I think are, are still a little bit missing, a few things that are still a little bit more clunky, but nevertheless, I've actually found it a fairly uh, neat system at least to try and experiment with. And frankly, the degree of things that I need, I'm going to have to look around, but I think C, uh, ISP config might actually be a decent alternative for cPanel, at least for some applications. So let's go ahead and have a look at what the login looks like here. Now, you'll notice right away that it is, uh, this is actually the, the master administrative login where we can do anything. It is a little bit clunkier and sometimes it can be very hard to find the services and the sites. So we have uh, disk quotas. So uh, here's my website at example.com. And if I pull up over here, example.com, it should show up. Hey, welcome to your website. This is just a, a basic landing page. All right, so I was able to go in here with uh, FileZilla. I was able to quickly connect on in. And you know, here's everything that we have. Here's SSH commands, private. Here's the SSL information. So this is our uh, SSL certificates are going to get dropped over there. This is actually the web. So if I were to make any changes to this guy over here, that would immediately reflect. Everything here worked perfectly, which was excellent because that's actually not the experience I had playing around with Webmin, which I managed earlier, where sure, I can set up FTP, but you can't access the web dev sections. <laughs> like, argh, kind of frustrating. Uh, so anyway, uh, that's what uh, that's what you got on on that end there. Uh, you have the ability to go in. Here's under clients. You have limits. Um, so your your limit templates. This is what tells you what options you have. So I have a small server and a big server, or a small server and a medium server set up. So you can see over here. Here's our limits. Here's what server it's using. The maximum number of web domains. The web quota. The traffic quota. Uh, PHP options. You can really see here that you have an easy toggle switch to turn on and turn things off. Here's your email limits, how many emails, like this is the maximum of email domains, max number of mailboxes for that domain. So you see a lot of the options that you have. Now you do have the, uh, the person does have the ability to log in with PHP My Admin, although there's not a simple one click button. You pretty much have to tell them, hey, you gotta go here for it, as far as I know. Uh, these are the things I'm gonna be experimenting with as I play around with this. Here's websites, this is a listing of all your sites. So here is my, the client name gets set up over here. Uh, here's the, the uh, domain name, here's the server. As far as your email inboxes, uh, we have, again, we have the, the email on the, 
uh, on this domain here. Now, I will say on this server right here, I don't have email functioning. That is, I, I'm trying to drill down exactly what the issue is. I think it's just because I am on a residential ISP, and residential ISPs generally block all of the ports needed for email support. So uh, that is, uh, that's probably why I'm not. I will be testing that when I move this out into a public server. That's something that I will be testing. But if you um, if you go on into the emails, you then there's actually um, here's email boxes. So this is test at example.com. And then you can actually log in by just heading on over to our website. Now I've got my round mail. So if I log in with my uh, with my email address, test at example.com. And let me remember what my password is for this uh, sample email address. I think that's it. Then that'll take me to our, take me there to our um, emails here. So there you go. There's your your new email list. So I can do all my webmail from right over here. And I still need to get the information on connecting this to a POP3 server. I think that information is out there. I just need to track it down. We have DNS zones, uh, which I've not played around with these a whole lot yet, but you can configure DNS zones. So we're going to get all that set up. There's monitoring. Uh, we got a site warning. We got a warning. We got a warning, Houston. We got a warning. All right. And there's some other tools there. Now, as far as our, where does our um, end user look? Well, our end user actually is going to look like this. So we use the exact same login. Again, we'll probably set up a, uh, we can probably set up a series of, um, DNS records to point things in the right direction. Even cPanel really does this too. So here I'm I'm actually forwarding over to the IP address colon 8080 slash. So if I just set set up a something in the DNS servers, you know, slash PHP my admin slash webmail uh, slash control panel, whatever else I want to do, it should get me forwarded over here. It's basically the exact same login, only the limits are now in effect. So now if I head on over here, I really can't add any other information. It says here I can add clients. Oh, I can't add any clients. It'd be nice if that information was hidden, if, it's, if I can't do it. But anyway, why is it there at all? Well, you can actually set this up as a reseller system as well. So I could build a master server, give somebody a reseller account, allow them to access things. Over here, you can see here's my uh, here's the email. So here's my email inboxes. I can add a new mailbox because this can support up to five emails. But if I want to add a new domain, I oh wait, you know what? I think this is, this one has the ability to have five domains. I think I give this one the ability for five domains set up. So you have the ability to control your emails. You can control your DNS over here. There's really nothing in tools other than changing your password over there. Here's of course our site. Here's the databases. Here's our database users. So you can actually get in. So um, let's see all that over there. Here's FTP accounts. Again, you can access your databases with uh, PHP My Admin, and it works perfectly. You just need to know your database user and your database password, basically your database uh, login credentials. We'll get you into there. Although I don't know if there's a master for the whole client account like you have on cPanel. That's a question I will look into. Uh, here's cron jobs. Again, you can enable or disable cron jobs. So if you want to add a new cron job, here you go. So here's the command. That's going to be something I will experiment with on some things. Uh, available packages. I'm, I'm not seeing anything under the available or the installed packages. I need to look into that one a little bit more. And then everything else is just basic statistics. So on the surface, as far as what the basic tools are that I generally use for setting up a server, cPanel is definitely more options, probably still a little bit better, which we oftentimes find in a commercial application. But if you're, if you're looking to save some costs, or in my case here, since I'm usually managing all of my client sites in servers anyway, even though I give them access to the cPanel, I generally still do all the management myself. I imagine that this is going to be just fine. So my next step is actually spin this up on a real live public server, throw a few websites on there, see how it runs for myself on a few of my own personal sites, 
and see what ends up happening as far as the ability to manage, run, and control websites up there. Overall though, ISP Config is looking very promising. Sure, it's not as polished, but I don't really need a lot of polish. I just need functionality with options and settings that are easy to find. And I'm finding that uh, so far this is, this is uh, something that's gonna work for me. So we'll go ahead and uh, keep an eye on it. And maybe in a month or so, I will have thrown this on a live server. I'll have a better chance to test out the email, test out how client servers work, test it out in just a, a more of a production type environment. So that's really what my, what my next steps and next goals are for here. So thanks for coming along on this video. Have a look at the playlist here for other FOSS business things. And let me know your, your thoughts and your comments and other things I should be looking for into this series as well. So thanks for coming along and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.